Welcome back to the Do Hard Things Today podcast. Today we are covering a pretty serious subject. We got Jed Blackwell over there on the controls. We got everybody's favorite triathlon and running coach, Coach Katie Malone, back sitting at the table with us. How you been doing, Coach Katie? Good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, great to be back. We've got a. We're going to be giving you guys a lot of content coming down the road, but it, this locally here there have been. Um, and for a lot of the people that listen to our podcast, there's going to be a lot of triathletes, a lot of cyclists, a lot of people that are very active out in their communities. And then a lot of people that just listen just for motivation and those kind of things. And so uh, locally, there have been over the last couple of months, there have been an increasing number of cycling accidents and cycling collisions. Um, there's been much debate over whether we even call them accidents or collisions. Um, but, but we have, we have had that in, in coach Katie. Um, and also we're going to be, um, Michael Forrester is going to be coming into the, he's going to be calling into the podcast to talk as well. He's a local cyclist and advocate. And we, we wanted to talk just about how, how can we keep ourselves safe? How can we, as cyclists, how can we keep ourselves safe? How can we educate our communities about the safety of cyclists and, and just remembering that that these are people that are out there on the roads on these bikes, and so we wanted to. We just felt it was very important to take some time to have this discussion and hopefully start a conversation, um, not only in our community but but the the bigger community, which we have people listening literally all over the world, to be able to help us and and help keep people safe. So, Coach Katie, that's a mouthful. Um, pretty pretty serious subject we're talking about today so take it from here thank you um i do think that this is it, it's it's one of those subjects where i don't like talking about it but we have reached the point in which i have to um, we all have to we all have to start having this conversation with our kids with our families with our friends even when people are going to disagree with us about cycling on the road um, I, I never realized that it was such a controversial topic. Um, I have ridden my bike since I was 12 years old on the road. Um, a lot of times as transportation, before I had my driver's license, my parents would say, hey, if you want to go to Tryon from Columbus or Landrum, like to go to the lake, you're going to ride your bike because we're not driving around. So I have ridden my bike for many years before I even had a driver's license. It was my transportation. and one thing that I think we all have to remember is like bikes, bikes are transportation. It's not just um, a leisure activity that, you know, all these cyclists do on our roads. It's something that we are out there, you know, getting from point A to point B. And honestly, if I can ride my bike from point A to point B and take care of an errand, I will. I've been known to go through the drive through at the bank on my bike. I mean, why not? Oh, well, I've never done that before, but that, that is, um, you know, I, I do think there are, that there are still people to do that. There are still people that use, use it as, as transportation. Um, I think for the, for the most part, people are using, and this is something I would say. If, if you see run, you rarely see how many runners out on the road do you, you hear of getting hit by cars? A few. A few. I mean, think about Andy's race. Yeah. but, but That's I mean, why it's called Andy's race. Well, well but I mean, I, I, you're always going to have, you're always going to have some outliers. It's not it. as frequent because first of all, runners typically are going to run against traffic. So you're going to see what's coming at you and you can jump off the road and out of the way, typically. Um, with cycling, the law states that we ride with traffic so you're not always gonna see what's coming behind you i mean most of us i think at this point ride with radar detectors so you can see how many cars you have behind you how fast they're coming like if they're coming um really fast the radar detector like faster than speed limit the radar detector will light up like bright red so you know that you have a moment <laughs> where you uh, hold your breath and hope you don't get hit. I mean, usually I will kind of like look over my shoulder to see how close they are to me. Um, not that that 
is really the point of this podcast. Really, right now, the reason why I want to talk about this is because of all the accidents we've been having. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it, it is, um, there have been a lot. And for those of you that are listening from, um, from around areas that aren't here, we're, we obviously broadcast out of the upstate of South Carolina, halfway between Atlanta and Charlotte, just to give you the context. And, and there have been there have been more than just one or two that it's, have happened. It at this point, it has really become an issue. Um, in the last year, I have lost two people who are close to me. Like they are not coming back from their bike rides. And I mean, excuse me if I do get emotional during this. It's, um, last year I did not ride my bike uh, really at all because I could not get on the road. I just I couldn't do it. Um, I held my friend's hand. When she passed away, um, terrible. And I just think that people don't realize that this is like life or death. You know, a mother did not come home to her kids. She was riding with someone because she didn't want to be out there by herself. And and it, it it still happened. You know, we we do things to be safe. We have lights. Where she was on a road where there was hardly any traffic, but unfortunately, it just takes one car. Yeah, it was an accident, you know, and it was terrible. Another woman who I've known for 20 something years, she was riding with her husband. A car went around her husband and hit her and killed her. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what is going on? Then, then the next two races we had, we had people get hit badly. I mean, they lived. And at this point, I'm like, we have to speak up. I have to switch my energy from putting on events and just doing coaching really to advocacy. Um, we have to come together as a whole. Um, I know there are a lot of leaders in the community who also feel the same way. And, you know, that is where my energy is going to go. We have to make, we have to create change in a positive way. Yeah. So, so the question is, how do we do that? How do we do that? How, how can we? How can we create positive change? Move is obviously something that is that is for life or death. It's it, life or death. It is life or death, which is, I guess, why I'm passionate about it. Um, I think the first thing is education, um, where we really have to start educating everyone. Kind of uh, advice that we give, but really that cyclists are, they have a right to the road, and we are allowed to be out there. Um, the other thing I think that's important is is that we educate drivers who are young because that's not something necessarily that's been done over the years. So it's going to take a while to create a new culture and a new way of thinking about cyclists. But really, when I was thinking about it this morning and, and how to put this out there, um, America is one of the greatest nations in the world. And no other place, no other country has this kind of, um, you know, death sentence when you're riding on your bike. You know, other countries, everybody's riding their bike as transportation or for sport, and it's respected, and, and cars are kind, and people, you know, slow down, give cyclists space. You don't want to kill someone. And I, I just think that we need to kind of have a new respect for life in the U.S., and we need everyone to see cyclists as, you know, their neighbors. One day I had someone pass me and pull in front of me and he pulled into a parking lot. I mean, he almost hit me. So I pulled into the parking lot too. And I, I just said, Hey, I said, my name's Katie Malone. You, you almost just ran into me. I said, you could have killed me. And he said, Oh my gosh, I know your father. And I said, well, how would you have felt if you had hit me or killed me. And he was like, I am so sorry. I had no idea that I was that close. And so I think that, you know, education really just on the broad spectrum, it's going to fall upon all of us to reach out to our circle of friends, even people who don't bike, to help them understand that, like, we're not some aliens out there in spandex. Um, we are your neighbors. We, we are, you know, we're the parents in the pickup line with you, with your kids. When you're on your way to your soccer match and you're late, you know, don't, don't get too close to the cyclists. They want to go home. They've got kids too. And, and I mean, I'm going to start posting again a picture of me in my normal clothes with my child and a picture of me on my bike and, and just begging my 5,000 Facebook friends, you know, Hey, please don't 
hit us. Please look out for us. Um, I know Michael Forrester has already taken this kind of to the next level, and Michael is definitely a leader in our community when it comes to bike advocacy, cycling everything. I think he was also the president of the Freewheelers Bike Club, which is a really big club in Spartanburg. And I am grateful that he has taken that on, and I am honestly going to follow his lead. Um, I think he is going to speak with us today, too, about things that he's doing in our community to make a difference. Um, I think we have him on the phone, or almost. We we do? Not yet. We don't have him on the phone yet. Um, okay, in that case, um, just going to speak a little bit about some of the things that I personally do to make things safer when I'm out on the road. Um, I don't usually ride with really large groups. I tend to ride with that are smaller, and I break them up into um, two to five people. And we separate out so cars can get around us and in between us. If we are on a road that has a little bit more traffic um, and we notice that there are a lot of cars piling up behind us, we will pull off the road and let them pass. And while that is not solving all of our problems, it's trying to create some goodwill with the motorists to see that we're respectful of the fact that they need to get somewhere too. Um, I really try to ride on roads that don't have as much traffic. Um, I try to stay really out on the rural roads. I feel a little bit safer there. I don't know if that's a false sense of security, but, you know, definitely some of these races that we have that are in urban areas, um, I don't know that that is going to be the way of the future. I think that we've had too much growth in this area to continue to support those. Um, with or without police. Um, I mean, the one accident that we had, there were there was a coned off lane and the person turned into it. Um, the other accident, there were police officers. So I think that as a whole, all of us are going to have to make concessions. The drivers, like regular people drivers, the cyclists, the race directors, I think we we all have to change how we've done things and change is hard. I mean, little change is hard, but I'm asking for big change. But I think if we all work together, we can make it happen. Yeah, because it's, um, and I believe we're gonna we're gonna pull Michael in here in a, in a second. And I I believe that there is the relationship between drivers, the community, and cyclists right now is not in a real good spot. No, there, there's a lot of you know you can just pull up anytime there's some kind of an accident or anything that that. Um, collision, whatever you want to call them. Um, you even find in comment threads just some pretty nasty things being said about, well, they don't need to be on the roads, they need to get out of the way, those kind of things. And um, and it's just, it just how do we overcome that, that there's just, the, because I, I told you, you know, I live in a place where there's a lot of riding that goes on in groups. And even myself who rides, I don't ride as much as you guys do, but um, sometimes I'll find myself getting behind a big group. And then you start getting a little frustrated because you're like, man, I've got, this is going to knock me off, you know, it's going to make me five or ten minutes behind my schedule. Well, you think about that in context, it's five or ten minutes. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. But some people that are coming into this with a, a an animosity already towards cyclists and a, and a disrespect for them, it causes, I think some of it causes them to, do some things that, that put the lives of these cyclists at risk. Yeah. And I mean, like every time the car is going to win and that's, that's the problem. And I, I do, you and I talked briefly about this offline, but you know, just in general, showing kindness and respect to everyone. And, and I don't know why this is something that's so hard for us to do in this day and age. Like, where did we forget to respect people? I mean, it just, it boggles my mind all the time when I see cars pass around a blind curve. I'm like, oh no, you know, you might kill somebody in another car. You might kill one of us. Like, please don't do it. And and so, you know, like if somebody were walking a dog on the side of the road, would you pass them really close? And I mean, cars do when I walk my dog on the side of the road. It's, it, it's just like, hey, give people a little bit of space. Um, but Right now, what I really want to do is I want to hear what Michael has done in our community and 
um, the changes that he is advocating and, you know, ways that we can all support what he's already doing and ways we can add to it. Good morning. How are you all? Good morning, Michael. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, absolutely. And um, as I as I dialed in, um, I mean, you just you were just right on point uh, with some of the notes that, that I had down. Um, as far as advocating in the community, I, I tell you, recently, you know, I've ridden, uh, you know, well over thirty some odd thousand miles, and and never really felt super unsafe until recently. It seems like it's just been a rash of incidents. Um, and trying to comprehend, I think what you mentioned is we we just had some substantial growth, um, but it's more of a culture mindset. And, and I think you know when I've traveled to Europe and cycled. You know, in in Germany, France, uh, Italy, uh, London. I mean, it's you know, it's a culture there, right? Which we don't necessarily have that with drivers here. And, and so, you know, I, I've ridden thousands of miles over there, never really felt unsafe, and uh, and for the most part here. But when I look at, as Kevin mentioned, um, you know, some some feeds uh, uh, this morning uh, in, in the accidents that have recently happened with the animosity towards cycling, I think what I felt like I, I'm, I was led to do was what can I do to advocate for cyclists in, in general, right? For, for, for not only myself, but our group as a whole is let's get out in the community and connect. So recently I've been able to partner with Renee Pierce. Uh, Renee's husband, Jeff was, was, uh, hit by a distracted driver, uh, I believe, and I hope I didn't get this year wrong, but I believe it was 2017. Um, and and uh, Jeff was hit on New Cut Road, which is just a rock's throw from my home. And um, and, and, and the, the driver was texting, right? In many of these cases, it's not the cyclist, right? It's usually a case of distracted driving. And that's where legislation and our legislators, we, we need to put the pressure on. I mean, we're a, we're a big voting block in, in this community. Cycling in the upstate is a huge thing, and we really need to push um, the, the, the a- advocacy for through the Palmetto Cycling Coalition. Paul LaFrancois is kind of our local rep for that, um, and, and pushing with the Palmetto Cycling Coalition to, to get hands-free uh, driving in South Carolina, uh, that would be a huge step. Just getting folks off their phones, uh, you know, right now for a lot of these things, it's a $25 fine. So it, it doesn't really, there's not really a punishable, uh, impact there, but getting out into the community. Uh, so in connecting with Renee Pierce, let me circle back to that. Um, Renee is putting on in school district one, and I'd love to see this go on in other school districts, but, uh, Mark Smith, who was formerly in District 6, is now the superintendent of District 1, has a program where a lot of kids are going through uh, driver's training in, in organizations now. They're not doing a lot of driver training in the school districts anymore. But what Mark has done is required that all students attend Renee's driving course to get their parking pass to come onto the campus. So regardless of where they get their driver's training, they have to take this driver safety course to get their parking pass for District 1 schools. Um, so Renee uh, brought Mickey Deering, who, as you all know, was recently hit uh, on one of our group rides up in Campobello by a hit-and-run driver. And so um, Mickey was able to attend uh, we did a presentation with the kids, and I, I got a text back from Mark Smith later that day. And you know, with, when we we went through all the hand signals, we went through you know what it's like to give that safe space that you talked about. You know, we like to call it that three foot safe space to pass safely and uh, to get around us. But you know, one of the things that I, I I did was you know you have to have that impact moment, and I put a picture of Mickey, and I said, this is what it looks like. When we don't do that, and of course it was Mickey in his hospital bed shortly after his accident or, you know, just a few moments after his accident. And there's kind of a gasp in the room. And Mark texts me later to say his daughter said, hey, it was one of the scariest things that I saw, but one of the most important things that I saw. And I think if we can show that reality and get out and advocate in our communities. Um, so I've got a couple of high schools that it's coming up to do more presentations like this. 
I know Bike Law, who has been a huge advocate uh, for for the legal side of of cyclists and protecting cyclists uh, when accidents happen. I was doing a big presentation uh, in Greenville coming up in the next uh, couple of weeks as well and here in Spartanburg. And Rachel and that gang have done a really good job. Um, and all the things that, that you mentioned, hand signals, wearing high-vis outfits, you know, advocating for lights on our bicycles. We still have cyclists that don't want to ride with lights. And I'm not talking about a, a cheap light that you buy at a big box store, but like high-vis daylight uh, flare type lights that you can see from a mile off. Um, you know, cameras, I'm really, really pushing, advocating that more cyclists use cameras, um, uh, cameras with radars. I, I, I have a, uh, a radar on my bike that notifies me when cars are approaching and their distance and speed. And, um, and it also has a camera. And as you mentioned, Katie, you know, us being courteous, the other side of that is us being courteous as yes, cycle. Definitely. Uh, and, and not letting those you know, cars pile up behind us. But I know it did a lot of talking there, but, I'm, you know, it's, it's, it's just a passion right now and a drive that, that, that I have, um, to, you know, it, to get this message out because we all want to get home safely. And I think at the end of the day is I, I, I replied to someone this morning, you know, we're not robots out here. We are cyclists. We are mothers, fathers, daughters, brothers, sisters, um, and, and, and and I don't think folks in a car always view us that, that way. We're just that aggravating cyclist. D definitely not. And that's why I really, I want to push, and I'm going to do it later this afternoon. I want to push everybody to put a picture of themselves and who they are out on Facebook and put a picture of themselves on their bike in their cycling kit. Because I want to remember or remind people that we are parts of the community, important parts a lot of times. Um, and I think people kind of forget that when we're out there. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And and as you talked about, and I'd like to kind of highlight a couple of things that I heard you mention, which is, you know, in, in group rides, you know, if we see cars piling up, let's, let's take a moment to pull over, wave them around, say thank you, you know, being courteous. A lot of times when someone does a safe pass, I try to give them a big thumbs up because I want to, you know, want to encourage them. Definitely. Waving yeah. too when they pass, waving that, when they're kind. I, I always try to wave because it just, you know, it's it's the little things. That's right, and and picking routes. While you know it doesn't necessarily make a make a, you know, maybe there's a one off scenario, but picking safe routes. Uh, I've tried to do a lot of riding north of Highway 11, you know, recently since I've moved up here. Um, and, and I know that's not possible for everyone in our county, uh, and but. You know, let's pick let's pick the routes that hopefully give us, you know, some safer opportunities. And, and one of the things and I know I may touch touch a nerve here, but one of the things that I've really tried to to push. I know folks go out and they ride solo a lot of times, but I just, you know, and again, Mickey was hit on a group ride. So it, it can happen anywhere. But I think as a single individual, sometimes we get lost in the trees. We get lost in there, which is why high vis kits and lights are so important. But uh, I just my personally am advocating for, uh, you know, even for triathletes, even if you kind of spread out a little bit, because I know the drafting rules when you're training, but try to ride in groups, the more lights, the more people, the more visual we can be. So it's not always possible for everyone to do that. But I really try to push to advocate for the more that are of us together, the more lights, the more better we're seeing. I, I love what you're doing in the high schools. Um, I think that that's that's something I would love to see done statewide. I know uh, Cliff Corley in Columbia has also rolled out a program that where all state employees have to go through it before they're driving a state vehicle. Um, he's also going into driver's ed programs, and he has created a nonprofit um, that is doing that. He was going to keep it just in Columbia, but after recent events in the upstate, I believe it's something that he's willing to bring to the upstate as well. And that's something that I think that you and I and others can kind of get involved in. Um, I'm definitely planning to be more involved in what you're doing, Michael. Um, I think it's it's really commendable. I think all of us need to be part of the solution here. Um, and I just really appreciate you taking time out this morning to to speak with us on the podcast. It was something I felt like we couldn't 
we couldn't put this off. Um, this is a here and now kind of thing that we need to take action now. All of us do. And, and, yeah. And Michael and Katie, I, w- I want to ask you both a question that is um, it's kind of a general question, but I think it's one that sometimes for those of us that are out on the road cycling, we take for granted what what are people supposed to do whenever they come up on a group of cyclists and Sometimes there's confu- There's a little bit of confusion, and sometimes you come up on cy- cyclists, and they'll give you some hand signals, and you know, are you supposed to wait till they wave you around? How much? How much room do they get? Sometimes there seems to be some um, misunderstanding from the general community that uh, you can, when they see people riding two abreast, they feel like that's not what they're. they're well, they're they're taking up too much of the road. Um, I mean, I know what the laws are, but I think for the general public out there, most people don't, they don't understand the laws and then they don't understand. And then for, for, I would say most people probably are not out there with venom in their mouth, wanting to spit it out at the cyclist, but they just don't understand, okay, what am I supposed to do here? You know, and how much room do I need to give them and how do I interact with the cyclist on the road? So if you two have anything you could, because we have a lot of, although we do have a ton of people that that obviously cycle, listen to the podcast. We have a lot of people that are just the general public that that don't don't ride bikes on the road, and they want to do the right thing, but just don't really understand what it is they're supposed to do. Kevin, if, if you know, my that is that is a fantastic question and something that has come up recently within within freewheelers, um, to where we are we are. We've had a let me make sure I, I say this the right way. So we want we want folks to quit waving people around. Like let the driver make the decision. Uh, one, because we don't want to create where maybe someone in the back didn't see a car that was ahead because we are riding two abreast and we're waving them around. Because it also the second thing is, and we've had two incidences re- recently where we were putting out our arm, and then this was in Mickey's incident where we were putting out our arm to pass and we didn't talk to that driver because it was hit and run. But in two other instances after that, we put out our arm to make a turn. I was on Landry Mill road, had my arm out along with the eight other people behind me. And I started to turn, um, uh, onto a road and the car started to go around us. And he said, Oh, I thought when you put your arm out that you were telling me to go around and you know, I don't know the understanding behind that, which is why I'm getting out in the high schools and advocating for, you know, how we use our hand signals. But look for those hand signals that you learned, hopefully, in driver training, uh, that if someone puts their hand out to the left, that they're getting ready to make a left hand turn. Um, as you talked about, Kevin, with a two by two or, you know, two abreast riding, you, you, you think about the distance. If we're, if there's 15 riders in a group and they're single file, you know, that's the distance of an 18 wheeler. But if we stay two by two, then that's the distance of maybe, you know, um, uh, uh, maybe a large box truck or something. We're trying to close that distance and, and also protect ourselves. But I would say if anyone is approaching a group of cyclists, hopefully the cyclists are two abreast and staying in two lines and, you know, doing all the things that cyclists are supposed to do on the road, but look for that safe passage, you know, stay on the other side of the yellow line. I know sometimes on rural roads, it's, it's, but give that safe passage. I always say you need to be at least three feet away, but you know, if there's a yellow line in the middle of the road, you know, stay on the other side of the yellow line. And if it takes that two to three minutes of patience, exercise that caution until you can safely see to, to go around. Um, and just safely pass. Um, you know, we have a lot of people that they feel like they need to speed up to 60 miles an hour to pass us. You know, we're typically most cyclists in the upstate are riding somewhere between 15 miles an hour and maybe on the high end, 20 miles an hour. Right. So we're not going super, super fast related to a car. So just exercise that patience and um, and, and just give that safe moment. Um, I totally agree about not waving cars by because it is confusing to the cars. Um, And I've heard that, you know, repeated recently very often. And I I tend to agree. I'm always looking to make sure cars aren't passing me when I'm trying to turn because a lot of times they do. Um, I also think communication among the cyclists, like we have to communicate and stay close together when we're riding in a group. Um, but for cars, it's like 
if you would not pass a car, don't pass the cyclists. Like if you're not in a safe area, if you're going over a hill, don't pass the cyclists because you can't see what's coming. And if there's a car coming in the other direction and you're passing us, it is either going to result in us getting hit or a head-on collision. And so always like just make sure that you're in a safe place where you can see. Yeah, I, I, those things are just they're so important, and they seem sometimes I think we they seem very basic to us because we're out in that community. But for a lot of people, I think they do just come up on this and they don't know what to do. Use and, your brakes. You that that's the other thing that I always like. It's like it is okay for you as a car to slow down, um, and and you know really hit your brakes, slow down, and and just take your time. Um, I know that sounds really silly, but I feel like sometimes people just can't slow down. It's like, well, it's easy in a car. You just use your brakes. So, um, you know, those are, are fairly simple things, um, and things that you, you know already, but people seem to forget. Yeah. What, what, else does, what else does our community need to know? You know, when we talk about cyclists and, and those that are out on the road, Mike, I don't know if you were on, if you were listening um, when I was telling Coach Katie and I were having this conversation about you you don't see a lot of runners that you do you do see some but you don't see i mean i was looking at some statistics just nationwide i mean there's this is not just here where we're seeing cyclists being hit a lot you don't see runners that much being hit by cars you see some but but nothing close to what you see with cyclists do you feel like that with with when we're on our bicycles and we got on our helmets and our kits and we're in a big group that it's that that people just don't really see us as well that's a group of people out there just like if you had a group run a lot of group runs around if you had a big group run and they're running i I, you just got to believe the cars are going to the cars and the people are going to take much more care with their interactions with those people i i believe we were having that conversation what's what's your opinion Do do you feel like it's people just don't for whatever reason, they don't register that these are these are people. These are people we go to school with, we go to church with, that we are in business with, that are moms and dads and brothers and sisters and sons and daughters. I, I just feel that to be true. What do you what do you what do you guys think? Yeah, I mean, if you just look at the comments, you know, I, I sent you and Katie an article this morning, you know, from YFF and the comments from individuals on there. And it, it was all about, you know, these cyclists need to learn a lesson or these cyclists need to get off the road. Um, these, you know, uh, it, it was all about what we needed to do, right? There was no responsibility for I need to be a safe driver. I need to exercise caution. And I think in this world of just busyness and hurriness, um, and listen, my wife will be one of the first ones to tell you when she, she gets behind us or, you know, and, and I've been in other areas like, hey, I get behind some cyclists and gosh, it just it slowed me down and I needed to get somewhere. Um, and I think in our world of just hurriness, we just don't exercise enough caution. And it's all about what I need to get to quickly enough. Um and in most instances, and I use Mickey's because it was just more recent and it hit home with me because it was our group ride. And, um, you know, we literally, if the car had waited five more seconds, literally five seconds, we were, the group was in the middle of the turn, right? And if the, if, if the car had waited five more seconds, the group would have been through that turn and the driver on its way. Uh, and, and so I just think there's, there's this mindset of, you know, it's, it's impacting me and, um, and, and you're right. And I, I keep trying to, as we did with the freewheelers billboards is, Hey, you know, Jeff was a nurse. Jeff was helping people. Jeff was a husband. Jeff was a father. When we put the safe freewheeler safety, uh, um, billboards up back in 2018 or 19, I believe it was. And, uh, for our safety ride, and it, it's, I, I think people view it as we're a robot on a bicycle, you know, and we're in, impeding their way um, and, and don't view it the same way. And I think that's just a culture thing. And that's something that we've, uh, we've just got to keep advocating for. I think one thing I really wonder about are, you know, in Europe, um, if you hit a cyclist, um, what are the consequences? Because 
Europeans don't play when it comes. I mean, you're going to lose your license. You might go to jail. Um, it, it is. It's just a very different um, <laughs> riding in Europe. It, it's very safe. Like I've ridden on busy roads in France, and the cars just let us have space. I, I couldn't believe it. I thought I was going to die. You know, I was like, oh, this is going to be terrible. And my friend was like, why are you so worried? It'll be fine. And off we went. Um, in the Netherlands, bikes have the right of way no matter what. Even if they pull out in front of a car, the bike still has the right of way. Obviously, that's never going to happen in the U.S. But I'm like, wow, these all these other countries can do it. And why can't we? Um, and it's going to take years and years to get to the point. Um, where, you know, the younger generation kind of sees some sort of respect for cycling. Um, I think also in France, you know, with the Tour de France, there's just like, oh, those athletes and people just have a huge respect for anyone cycling. And it's just crazy how it is in the U.S. Um, versus, you know, like these all these countries in Europe. Um, can we get there? I don't know. Can we, like, learn some lessons from the countries in Europe? Um, I... I I don't know how to do it, but I know we have to start. And if we don't start, we'll never get there. Yeah, and I think that's – this is a start. People like you two that are ad, out there advocating, out there trying to educate and and trying to just make bring the awareness to this problem that is becoming – I mean, it, it seems like it is escalating rapidly, this problem. It and, is. And, you know, like you said, when you saw the emotion in, in your eyes whenever – we're talking about your friend that you mm. literally, you know, held her hand as she passed away because she was hit. And, you know, you just think about the, just the terror that comes from the people that experience these collisions and then their families. And, and then, and then that just trickles down to the entire cycling community where again, you become where it's, it's something that, 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 that community loves to do, but then you become afraid to do it because you, you're like, hey, do I want to put my life at risk just going for a, a ride? And, and uh, we have got to, we've got to figure this out. And, and I appreciate, I'll tell you this, as someone who does ride my bike out on the road, that I appreciate the advocacy of you two and what you're doing and look forward to to seeing this grow and, and hopefully helping a little bit I can to help you guys push this, push this forward. I think this is just the beginning. Um of what we're going to do and what we're going to be able to do with, um, you know, the power of the people that we have in our community. And I'm looking forward to being a part of that and being a part of positive change. And Michael, anything else you, you want to share with the community and um, any any other words of wisdom for those people that are out there that are, are trying to figure out how to who really want to be a part of a solution? Yeah, thank you so much for that, because uh, I did want to kind of close out with if if you want to be involved in the change, right, um, we are looking for opportunities. I know Katie contacted me. Uh, we, we've talked several times this week. Like We're looking for opportunities to get into the community. So if, if you have a group that you would like for us to come speak to, whether it's me, Katie, or other individuals, I've had several folks who have contacted me about saying, how can I be a part of something? How can I be a part of the change? Is, is we're looking for opportunities to engage because that's where, you know, being in front of the community is, is, as you know, Kevin, it's, it, that's where you have to start is get, getting that message out and getting others on board. Uh, and then number two, uh, for cyclists, I, I'm speaking to all the cyclists and folks who want to is like, we don't want this to overshadow what we love about our sport. Uh, again, I talked about, I've ridden 30,000 miles or so and in and, and, and these, but it's only these one or two or three instances that change lives forever. Um, and, and we would love for you to be in coalition to join Greenville Spinners clubs, to join, um, uh, free wheelers of Spartanburg, you know, to get involved in your local advocacy groups, uh, and support that. Uh, you know, a lot of people can go out and ride and like, hey, I don't need to join Greenville Spinners. I don't need to join uh, Freewheelers. But funds from those memberships go towards uh, our cycling coalition who is advocating at the state house. And that's really, uh, you know, the next step is how do we get this to the legislatures for infrastructure, for penalties and things like that. But please contact us. We would love to get in front of your group 
um, and, and share this information. And you can contact um, Kevin, Katie, or myself. Uh, we all know how to get in touch with each other and would love to come out and, and, and be a part of that. Yeah, and we will put the we'll put all the contact information in the show notes and um and like I said this is the start of this. So this is the, the the first of a series that we will do, you know, as as this thing continues to grow and, and hopefully as we start to see the progress that, that needs to needs to happen. And and I would just encourage, you know, everyone listening to this, just remember when you see that group and again I see on um where I live, you know, I mean there is a huge um group of cyclists i mean all almost any any evening that you're going to find a big group and a lot of times i get behind them and and sometimes you know i'm like you know like you, you said lita sometimes of man I'm like, oh man gosh i see all the blinking lights i was like oh that's gonna knock me off five minutes but i'm but i do know that i guess the difference and, and this is where i think we will be able to see some progress is when people start seeing them as when i see those lights even though I am a little bit frustrated knowing that it's going to cost me another five minutes, I also know probably at least half the people in those blinking lights, I know them. I know them. Now, I may not be able to pick them out because, you know, they're all uh, with all the kits and helmets on, but I know them. I know them. I know those people, and um, the last thing I would want to do would be to cause harm to any person, but, you know, especially the people that you know and have relationships with. And so hopefully we can we can start breaking down some of these barriers and, and, and again, the advocacy, the education, the things that you guys are pushing. Um, I can tell you, this is something our community really, really needs. So um, speaking on behalf, we, we really appreciate you two and what you're doing and uh, we will do everything in our power to be able to help promote that and push that and, and be any kind of advocate that we can, we can be. And a lot of times we, we close podcasts and we're talking about, you know, hard things we're doing with, with, you know, exercise and, and mental things and those kind of things. But I would just encourage you, if you're listening to this, um, with, from a safety perspective, it's the same thing. You know, I know it may be hard to, to take that extra five minutes. I know it may be hard to, to follow the rules, the, the, the laws, to look at people as not just cyclists, but people. But, but if you'll do those hard things today, we'll be able to, all of us cyclists will be able to see it tomorrow and tomorrow will take care of itself.